Hello everybody. I've been wanting to make a notification device for my mailbox so that when the mail's delivered I get some kind of indication in the house. Didn't want to spend a lot of money for it. I didn't want a really complicated circuit and I needed a lot of range, transmission distance. And it dawned on me that these garage door openers, the transmitters and the receivers have um, a really decent range of communication. So I picked up this garage door opener on Craigslist. Uh, the gear is sheared on the outside and uh, there's no rail. So all he was doing was selling the power head, but the power head has a main gear that is broken. And uh, I got a remote with it, but the remote is the wrong remote. I've been able to find the right opener. It happens to match the ones I have in my house. And I was able to get the opener to communicate with the radio on this scrap unit. So I'm going to strip the radio out. Uh, make a pretty simple circuit to give me an indication light inside the house and hopefully I'll be able to make myself a really cheap but effective and long distance long range communication mail notification system. Be sure this motor run capacitor is fully discharged and the easiest way to do that is to just short the red and blue wires or the, or the two terminals, the red and blue terminals or the terminals that the red and blue wires are connected to just to make sure there's no more charge left on this capacitor. So here are the two circuit boards, the control board here, power supply there. There are a whole bunch of power connections coming into the power supply and there are some other connections right here which all seem to be running off to the uh, uh, limit switches and settings for the door open and door close travel. So these all these wires here in this bundle are all related to these little micro switches and that tell the control board where the door is, whether it's all the way up or all the way down, closed closed properly or open all the way. Well it looks like this is going to work out great. I've disconnected the limit switches. So all I have connected is the motor to the control board and if I simulate the door opening on my mailbox all I need to do is add a latching relay every time that button's depressed power is applied to that blue and red wire just for sounds like two or three seconds But that's all I need. I need it to turn on for just a second to cause a relay to latch. That latching relay will turn on an indicator light. I might even continue to use this circuit here. So it looks like just a latching relay and a push button is going to be all I need to be able to make this work. So when I... Maybe two seconds. Looks like that relay energizes for two seconds when this is depressed. So I have the power supply and the logic control board uh, completely off the opener and disconnected from everything. So you have the power cord here, you have the original terminal block, which has the MOVs for surge protection. I've disconnected the harness that goes right here, which connected to the limit switches and to the rotation sensor. And I've left this harness here. The orange and white wires go to the lamp holder. That's that lamp that's on this side. And on this particular opener, it had two lamps. So you can see that there's also another orange and white wire here that come off of this connector. Uh, the other white lead off that connector goes to the common power connection right over here. And then there's a black lead. And the black lead also runs to the hot side of the incoming AC power. The first thing we need to do is figure out whether the blue wire or the red wire are activated when you press the remote control clicker. So in order to do that, make sure that none of the wires, none of these wires, the ends are touching each other or they're touching anything. Wouldn't hurt to tape them off, but make sure they're not touching anything and then connect your meter to the common, which is the white, and let's start with the blue connection. I've got my meter set to AC volts. I'm going to 
power up the control. And when I activate the control on the blue wire, let's see if any voltage is there. You can see it only went up to 12, briefly went to 12. So 115 volts is not available there to power the motor. Let's see if the red lead gives us a different result. I have my meter lead on the red lead. There's my voltage. And when I activate the clicker, let's see what happens. There, you see it jumped to 120 volts and then went back to zero. So now we know that whenever the clicker is activated, in my case, it's going to be the red lead that's going to turn on. And that would have been a, a lead that went to the motor to either run it in forward or reverse. Red is one direction, blue is the other. So every time this clicker is activated, the red lead is going to go high for a second or two and then go to zero. So that's the signal I'm going to use to cause a relay to latch on. And it will turn a light on and it will stay on until it's reset. So now make sure your power is off and disconnect this connector here. So I flip the connector over and we know that I don't need the blue wire anymore. I needed only the red wire. You may need to keep the blue wire and remove the red wire. Rather than cut these off, let me just show you how to remove it from the connector. If you press down on the little metal tab here, there's a little retaining clip here. If you press down on this tab, you can pull the wire out. Let me see if I can do that with the camera here. So you press the tab in and you can extract the pin. The wire will come out. If you want to reuse it again, you're going to have to bend the little metal tab back up, not too far, shove it back in the hole and it will stay. As I mentioned earlier, this white lead, there are two of them. One of them goes to the common connection right here in the terminal block. I want to leave that alone. The, the other white one and the other orange one go to the lamp holder. So this white and orange go to this lamp holder connection here. And then the white and orange off the harness, wiring harness, went to the other lamp holder. I don't need those. You can remove those as well if you want to. So here's the most important wire. In my case, it's going to be the red one for you. It might be the blue one. And the only other things you're going to need are some relays. Here's some different styles of relays. All of these will work. They have 115 volt AC coil in them. You're going to need a push button switch. And that's to be able to reset the indicator by unlatching the relay. So this will use a switch to unlatch the relay. And you're going to need an indicator light. In my case, just to keep the circuitry simple, for the time being, I'll probably convert this to LED later, but to keep the circuitry simple, I'm just using 115 volt. Uh, this is probably a neon indicator. You could use the lamp holder right here as your indicator. I'll show you shortly in a schematic how to connect that indicator lamp, whether it's this one or whether it's not something as simple as this. And if you really want to get cute with it, you could, in fact, probably get something like a push button indicator that has a built in light. So you could accomplish in one device the function of these two devices. So combine an indicator light with a push button into a lighted push button. This one happens to be a, not a lighted push, push button, but you get the idea. A lighted push button would have your lamp doing this function for you and a switch doing this function. That's all you need to make the circuit work. I've mocked this up with a indicator lamp, push button, and relay. In my case, I've chosen a four-pole relay here. That allows me to have additional circuits that are turning on and off. I could use the extra set of contacts to drive a buzzer, another light, or some other circuit. But you only need one set of contacts on the relay. You only need a single pole, normally opened relay with a 115 volt AC coil. So let me show you the schematic. Maybe that will help things a little bit. I 
I have everything connected now exactly as shown in the schematic. Here's my relay over here, here's my pilot light, and here's my push button switch. And this is just a mock-up demonstration set up for you. So the system is energized right now. If I activate the control with the clicker, you'll see the light came on over here. And if I reset right here with my push button, you'll see the watch the light. I don't know if you can see that light. Let me see. Lights off, ready for the next activation for my mail carrier. Lights on, but reset. Lights off, activation again by my postal carrier. Lights on and will remain on until I reset it. I intend to add what is called a tilt switch in parallel with this push button. I originally wanted to use a tilt switch that didn't contain any mercury, but this tilt switch is almost a half inch long and probably too long to fit inside my remote clicker case. Since I want the mercury tilt switch to be inside my remote clicker case, looks like I'm going to have to use a small one like the one shown here. You can buy these online from AliExpress.com. I bought 10 of these for under $1.50, which included shipping and tax. If you do not have an AliExpress account, please use the referral link in the video description below. If you do not have a Top Cash Back account, I also recommend you create one of those using the referral link also below in the video description. Once you have a Top Cash Back account established, log into your TCB account first, then link to AliExpress, log into your AliExpress account, and you will typically get 6% cash back from TCB for your AliExpress purchase. I'm going to mount this opener to the inside door of my mailbox so that when the door is opened, the tilt switch will activate this connection here. Exactly the same as if my mail carrier had to press this button and it will activate the system. So it's a very, very simple circuit and the beauty of all this is that since this power supply and this control board are exactly what I have in my two existing garage door openers. In the event that one of those fails, I have a radio to come back to or a power supply to come back to. I can just literally pull these out of my mailbox notification system and plug them into my existing garage door opener and they will still work. I didn't compromise any of these circuit boards by making any modifications to them at all. All the modifications were done after the plug. So everything here is factory original and can be used as originally intended, not as a mailbox notification system. My plan is to use an extra set of contacts here and to take either 24 volts or 5 volts off of this off of these connections here. And keep in mind there's also another connection on this side up in here. The orange to white is about 24 volts and the gray to white is about 5. So you could easily take some power off of those two connections to power up an LED circuit with a 555 timer. If you want to add a beeper or some other functions, I'm going to use the plastic just as you see it here. I'm going to build an enclosure around this side. So that means taking out the lamp holder, but you end up with an ugly hole here. So here's the lamp holder right here. And what I've done is I've cut it off and I've ripped the metal terminals off that engage the light bulb. The only thing left for me to do is to wait for my tilt switches to arrive from Asia. Uh, the price is right, but they take about three weeks, and I need to complete the enclosure for my gizmo here. I'm just going to use uh, what exists and fabricate some kind of cover. Here's an example. I happen to have this piece of sheet metal. So if you're interested in seeing 
the final finished product as well as how I installed the tilt switch inside the remote clicker please subscribe to my channel if you found this video entertaining or somewhat helpful to you or interesting how about a thumbs up thanks for watching